I am a huge fan of using video. It is the second best way to be able to connect with clients, customers, past, present, and future. Uh, first being in person, second being, it, you know, this is the only other way that you can look somebody in the eye, they can hear your voice, they can see your face, and you can really connect with them on that level. So video that stands out from the crowd. Thanks again, Independence, for having me. You guys know who I am. We met before. So this is just a teeny bit about me. There's my QR if you want to connect, but that'll be on the last page too. Although my town is looking mighty fine in the background there, coming to you from El Paso, Texas. Um, before I start this, I'm going to show you um, a quick video that I threw together that I have used as my LinkedIn profile video. So you can, if you didn't know that on LinkedIn, rather than just having a picture, you can actually have a video that begins to play as a GIF when people get to your LinkedIn page. And um, I'm gonna show you exactly how I made this video, the app that I used to make it, the products that I used to make it. And this is just a little example of a quick 30 second video that I put together using some of the techniques that we're gonna talk about uh, today. My name is Sam Trimble. I'm a marketing technology director with West, a WFG company in association with WFG National Title. I'm a founder of a social media ad firm called Star Creative based in Texas, still a card carrying member of the National Association of Realtors and have been for about 15 years. And I graduated from the University of Texas at El Paso. I truly believe in giving back to your community and I'm a firm believer in a rising tide mentality. Want to know more? Just shoot me a message. So it probably took me about uh, three or four minutes to make that video at the, at the absolute most. And that includes probably messing up a couple takes and saying my name wrong or something stupid like that. But so why video? Um, I think we've all answered that question. I used to have to ask it and, and, and talk about that a little more. Now the numbers are obvious. Uh, one of my favorite marketers, Mark Robertson says, Robertson says, be used all over the customer life cycle, whether it's customer service, marketing, even recruitment. And I firmly believe that this is something that can be used throughout the life of a customer life cycle from the very beginning, uh, throughout every transaction. And the proof is really in the numbers. I'm a nerd and I like statistics and numbers to prove my points. So a couple quick ones, 85% of all internet users in the US watch video across all their devices every day. 85%. And I would, I would think that number has probably gone up during the pandemic, people spending more time on social and engaging in that way. Um, but people are watching video every day, whether they're on their laptop, um, whether they're on a desktop, a device, or uh, a phone, a tablet, whatever it might be. And then 82% of businesses use video as a marketing tool. I'm actually shocked that that's not more, but I guess there's always going to be some holdouts that just don't use uh, every tool that they could. Um, so keeping up with the Joneses is not always a bad thing. Consumers love seeing videos on social. According to Animoto, and by the way, there's statistics very similar to this from all of the major social media platforms and advertising platforms. But according to Animoto, video is consumers' favorite type of content when scrolling through their socials. And we are our own best market research when it comes to this. What are the things that you see that are most engaging on your social media? It's usually photos, definitely, or I mean, usually videos. Definitely photos stand out more than black words on a white screen. And we've talked about that in Social 101. Um, but video is far more engaging than any other type of content when it comes to what people want to see on social. And then the last one, 74% of marketers say their video has a better return on investment than static imagery. So again, black words on a white screen, okay, at least you're engaging. Photos, all right, we're getting there. Video, the number one type of content, and every platform will reward you for using it, whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it might be, they will reward you for using video over static imagery. So I think the number one thing that I always uh, kind of cover first is we have to get out of our own way. You know, none of us like the way we sound. We may not like the way we look. Um, I constantly have these gigantic bags under my eyes and I've tried all the little caffeine stuff in the world. It doesn't matter. They're there. I don't sleep much. But at the end of the day, I am me. You are you. We sound different and we look different. And that's what makes life so cool, right? We're all totally different. So we got to get out of our own way and stop worrying about whether or not we like the way our voice sounds or how we look that day. And we need to just engage with people because at the end of the day, this is exactly who we are. Uh, video is just a way to capture it. So I want to cover a couple quick things. Uh, the first being lighting. Um, I am <coughs> a big fan of ring lights. I'm going to show you the one that I use. It's sitting right in front of me right now. And you can actually see 
you know, you can see me right now. And then when I don't have it, you can see what happens when I turn it on and off, right? It, and so the thing about lighting is your message can be lost sometimes if your lighting sucks because it can become so distracting if someone can't see you well and you're not nice and clear that they're not hearing your message. So lighting is really important, almost as important as sound when it comes to a good video. And you can see the difference here in a before and after, and I just showed you mine as well. So let there be light. At the end of the day, um, there's all kinds of different options for that. There's little LED lights that you can attach to a little rig with your cell phone. I use one of those sometimes too. But ring lights are perfect for a lot of things. A lot of them have a little mount here where you can mount your cell phone. You can use them for your Zoom meetings like I am right now. But you can also use them for shooting videos because of that little phone mount. So there's actually, um, uh, this is a little kit that I've bought several times over. And I'm going to tell you a few reasons why I like this one. So, uh, and this comes from my uncle. He always said, it's not a project if you don't buy a tool. He's one of those guys, he built his own house in Colorado. It's amazing, um, but it's true. It's not a project if we don't buy a tool. So this is a little tenant's ring light. As you can see here, you can change the warmth of the light. So I usually, I used to use a little bit more um, fluorescent style and I can show you the difference there. You can see where I, I look a little more fluorescent there. I've warmed up a little bit and then now I'm much more warm. And it makes it almost look like I live in Florida and have a slight tan, which I definitely do not. Um, but this one's great because not only does it have the light, it also has a little mount for your cell phone. And then my favorite tool that I own in my marketing world probably is this right here. And it is a Bluetooth remote so that I can start and stop video. I can take pictures um, from afar using my cell phone without having to kind of walk around it and press stop or reach up and press start. I can just click it. And so this little kit right here, it's under 25 bucks and it literally has almost everything you need to start shooting some great little videos. A lot of people use things like this, but if you see an ad where there's, you know, 50, 100, $150, just know that you can find great solutions for under 20 bucks, uh, in especially under 25 bucks. So that's one that I've bought many times. So we talked a little bit about lighting, why it's important. I showed you kind of the proof in the pudding with mine. Um, but obviously, we need to be able to hear what you're saying as well. So when you're shooting a video, you know, we're not in a studio, we're not in a, a, a climate and, and sound controlled and light controlled environment, we're out kind of doing our thing, we're at open houses, we're at our listings, we're in our office, we're with our clients. But that said, the more quiet the surroundings are, the better, the more background noise you have, the more apt you are to have your message be lost and speak up, but don't yell at me. I see people that sometimes talk like this and you're like having to strain to figure out what they're saying. And then I see people that are doing this and I'm like, dude, why are you mad? Relax, right? So make sure that you speak loud enough to be understood and heard, but not too loud to where it seems like you're yelling at somebody. So in today's world, all of our phones, all this, this array of microphones that there's multiple on an iPhone now, there's some down here, there's a couple up here, and there's actually a couple right in here too, um, is good. I, um, this little Tackstar SGC 590 microphone, this little boom mic that I'm showing you here, or shotgun mic rather, is like $20. And that takes your sound from good to really good. Right, so um, your phone works, but if you really want to take it to another level, you can buy a little shotgun mic that plugs straight into your phone. If you have an iPhone, you'll need a little adapter for this. It's like two bucks. That's a 3.5 millimeter to a Lightning. Um, but this has settings that will help you drown out other sound. It'll make sure that your voice is not too tinny, but not too bassy as well. Right there in the middle, and it really directs. Um, the sound well. A lot of people use little lavaliers. Some people use wireless lavaliers. You're always having batteries go out. The wire gets messed up because they're 12 feet long and they're getting stepped on and things like that. This uh, shotgun mic works really well. And again, it's like under $25. So your phone is good, but a shotgun is even better. And at the end of the day, kind of like I've been alluding to, I used to shoot everything on a DSLR, on a Canon camera, and I had to import all the files in raw and, you know, do all kinds of stuff to edit things. Everything you need is in your pocket now for the most part, right? So like we would like some better lighting. Yes, we would like a little bit better sound. But even if you don't do either one of those things, the device that's in your pocket is more than capable of doing this now. So we can no longer use the excuse of like, well, I don't have a great camera and, you know, I, I, I don't know how to edit video really well. Um, those days are over. 
That said, when you're thinking about using your phone to shoot some video, there's a couple settings that you should be aware of. And so I wanna, I wanna share these with you. Um, the first one is, is a grid setting and I'll, and I'll show you why in a minute. So this is an Apple device, this is an Android device. It's this setting right here under camera settings, grid lines. And I would, I would suggest that you toggle that on. And what that does is it shows you, um, basically it places grids on your phone and it shows you, there's this, there's a kind of a theory in video and photography called the rule of thirds, right? So everywhere where these lines intersect is a focal point where our eyes typically go, right? So you don't have to always be dead center. If you notice in that video that I showed you at the beginning, the first shot, I'm, I'm kind of over here off to the side. The second one, I zoomed in slightly and I'm over there in the center. But knowing where you are on the camera is very important because I'll see videos where somebody's head is like this or somebody's head is like this. And it's pretty distracting if you're slightly cut off and you're not in, in a good place. So I think this is a good reminder to be able to, to be in, in a good place. And then the other thing I would say is these phones are capable of recording video in massive file sizes and incredible uh, high definition. So at the end of the day, um, you're not going to need anything more than 1080 at 30 frames a second. If you start getting into 4K and now ultra 4K that it's not even on here and other, um, it says here that it's going to be 40 megs or 90 megs. You're going to end up with videos that are gigs in size. It's going to slow down your phone. It's impossible to send them to people. You have to upload them and it takes forever. At 1080 at 30 frames a second, and again, this is right under your video uh, settings on your phone, you're never gonna have to deal with a file size that's gonna be a pain to deal with um, because you don't wanna shoot something and then not be able to do anything with it. So that's kind of the optimum for me, nice and clear, um, but not too huge of a file. This has become a argument based on uh, TikTok and Instagram Reels. So I always go back and forth on this. If I am shooting some short form content, i.e., uh, you know, Instagram um, story or some real stuff or TikTok, then obviously I'm probably going to be shooting in vertical, right? Like if I want it to look the best, it's going to be in vertical. If I'm shooting a more long form thing that I'm going to use for social media for a while, maybe pin to the top of my page, maybe it's a little profile of a upcoming listing, maybe it's my origin story or my business profile, then I'm usually going to want to shoot it in horizontal. For the most part, that is the way to get the biggest bang for your buck. Um, Shooting in 16 by nine is what most people view. That's what they view on their phone for the most part, other than stories and TikTok. And that's also what they view on any other type of device. So I would typically recommend this. And what I will say is it's easier to turn a horizontal video into a vertical video than it is a vertical video into a horizontal video. So if you start with horizontal, you're always probably gonna be in a better place. Um, but again, you know, that slide's totally changed over the last couple of years because now there is a reason to actually shoot in vertical. Before we'd see somebody doing this and we're just like, no, man, like turn the phone. Now it's like, okay, well, that can work too. So editing is one of those things that like most people don't want to start doing. We're looking for people to pay. There's lots of great services for that. If you work with a videographer, great. If you don't, there's all kinds of cool services like vid chops that you can pay a small fee and send files to people and they'll edit them for you. That said, um, if it's free, it's for me. And both of these are either free or super inexpensive ways to edit your own video. So Clips is an app that is embedded in every Apple device. When you get the device, it's, a, it's an Apple app. They have some cool, pretty simple to use uh, templates with some decent looking graphics and you can resize things pretty easily if you wanted to make it uh, story format versus 16 by nine or whatever. Um, and you can record some little VOs if you wanted to and whatever. I love Quick. So Quick is an app that was made by GoPro. GoPro is all about empowering their users to be able to make really cool kind of action sports videos using their footage. And they found out if we can make it kind of plug and play where we just have to click a couple buttons and then we can create something that quickly, people will actually do it. So the great thing about this product is, is that at the end of the day, you can make a video in under two or three minutes. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about, about how. So a couple of thoughts that I have when using Quick. Um, one thing that I used to do was I would take a cache of maybe 20 or 30 photos of a new listing that I had. 
And then I would go to that listing. I would stand out front with my uh, cell phone camera and I'd say something along the lines of, you know, welcome to 2028 Bob Hope. My name is Sam Trimble. I want to give you a quick tour, four bedrooms, three baths, $650,000. Let's take a look. That's all I would say. And then there would be the 20 or 30 uh, interior photos. And then I would wrap it up by saying, Again, my name's Sam Tribble, 915-269-7634. Give me a call if you'd like to see this house in person. I would do that, upload it into Quick, select the music that I want. It will give you a title slide that all you have to do is type in, you know, maybe the address, the price. You could throw your logo in there uh, for compliance purposes and to also get your logo out there. Um, and you're going to click by basically like three buttons and it's going to turn it into a video of whatever desired length that you want, right? And all of the music that is in Quick is open source for you to use as a user of Quick. You don't have to worry about copyright issues. Um, you can also use your own music if that's something that you wanted. But literally, 30 seconds of video of you saying welcome to a house with the address, the price, a little bit about it, and then thanks for stopping by with your name. Um, it's amazing how well those come out. And it mixes the video with the beat of the music. So the editing looks really cool. The transitions are really cool. And you can pick a plethora of different styles, whether you want it to be a little more romantic, if it's a really nice, maybe it's a colonial style home that's very elegant, or if it's something kind of modern and edgy, you can absolutely pick music and an editing style that goes along with that. Quick is like $9 a year. Um, so it's not free, but it's like $9 a year and it's totally worth it. And you can easily export in any size that you want. So if you want it square to fit perfectly on Instagram, no problem. If you want it 16 by 9 vertical to fit perfectly as a story on Instagram or on TikTok, no problem. But to me, it's about finding things that can help us work a little more efficiently. And Quick will string together a video for you in a matter of seconds that looks really good. And it doesn't take a ton of time away from doing what you do best, which is writing contracts and closing deals, not making videos, right? So I love those two. And then once you've thought about <clears throat> creating some video content, uh, the, the question is, what do I do with it now? You could have the greatest content in the world. And if you don't have a plan for distribution, it really doesn't matter. So there's a couple of quick things to think about that are very obvious. One, of course, you can post it on social media. You can do that in a bunch of different ways. We talked about stories, which uh, gets far more eyeballs than a regular post in a feed, by the way. So if you want more and more people to see it, I would definitely recommend adding video to your stories. You can message through social media. Uh, I know that sounds kind of interesting, messaging, social media, texting. But when I was working on kind of building relationships with clients or building my sphere of influence, <coughs> I realized, you know, not, not they didn't necessarily want to engage uh, in the ways that I wanted to engage. What was convenient and easy for them? So when I was working with clients or trying to woo somebody to work with them as a client, there were times that I would send them a quick little video message through their LinkedIn profile. We talked about a little bit on Social 101, kind of building um, some people. I love the idea of using LinkedIn, right? If I wanted to become the expert realtor for a certain company, I could go uh, become their go-to real estate agent. I could go to LinkedIn, search that company. It serves up a link at the top of that LinkedIn page that says 23 employees here. I click that, there's a drop down of the 23 people that work at that company. If I connect with those people and I shoot them a quick video about a new listing that came up near their corporate headquarters, for example, or something like that, introducing myself, engage with those people, how quickly could I actually become the de facto um, resident real estate agent for that group of people using video. So again, if I were to write them a little message on LinkedIn or Instagram or someplace like that, it may or may not be read and it may or may not be engaging to them. If they open it and it says, hey, Kevin, it's me, Sam. I wanted to quickly introduce myself. That feels very different than black words on a white screen. So I used to do that. And with texting, um, it was funny. When I was uh, an active agent and there were certain times, right, like we can all relate um, so our clients wanted everything from us. They wanted instant gratification, instant response, everything to be uh, as quickly as possible and on their schedule. And then I'd need a certain document from them signed or something additional to get to the lender, to get to the title company. And they would basically ignore me, right? Well, what I found was if I could appeal to them using my face and my voice and looking them in the eye, there was a better chance that I would get that stuff more quickly. So one of the strategies that I started using 
was texting quick videos rather than texting a little request or emailing them something. So it may look like, hey, Susan, it's me, Sam. I know you're slammed right now. We really need a copy of that amendment that we signed just the other day. If you could please make sure that you and your husband sign that and get that to me today, I'd really appreciate it. That converted so much better than a quick text, like any word on that amendment yet. So using video as a communication um, with your clients and customers during the transaction process is actually something that I really like doing. Of course, you can send video using email. It doesn't work as well, right? You have to put it as an attachment or something like that. So that's why I love, there's a few different programs that I like that embed video directly into the body of an email message. Um, the one I use a lot is called BombBomb. Bomb. I like it because of its trackability. So I used to make little videos and I'd send quick market updates to my clients and customers using a video, using something like BombBomb. Bomb. And at the end of the video, I'd say, hey, you know, there's a couple links below with more information. If you'd like to reach out, please let me know. Have a great day. There'd be a link below that says prices are rising. What's my home worth? There'd be a link below that's saying, you know, now's a great time to invest. Every single time somebody clicked on one of those links within BombBomb, Bomb, I would know that they clicked on the link. I knew when they watched my video. I knew if they watched the whole video or only part of it. I knew if they forwarded the message to somebody else. I knew how many times they watched my video. And so all of that data is just a good way to be able to say, hey, here's three or four people that have engaged a lot with that video. Those are warm leads now. Those are people that are interested in what I'm talking about. So I'm not spending my time targeting people that maybe never even watched the video. I know who watched it and who didn't watch it. And it's a great way to be able to follow up with people. So I love BombBomb Bomb and its trackability. You can also use it to text and, and embed in regular emails without having to go through BombBomb. Bomb. But it's a really cool product. Um, and again, it's all about delivery. Once we've created some of these videos, what do we do? So there is a kind of like a three-part series about editing and all that kind of stuff that we could definitely get into one day. But this is a quick overview of why video a few thoughts of how you could be using it, a couple technical things when it comes to file size and things like that. But like anything else, this is just a random dude. I don't know who this guy is, um, but I used him as my final slide. With anything else, do the result or do the work and the result will follow. And so one thing I like to do with this particular class is give you a little bit of homework, right? We talked about how one of the hardest things to do is to get out of our own way. We don't like the way we sound. We don't maybe like the way we look. This is my cell phone number and this is my email. And I would invite each and every one of you that's on this call to shoot me a quick video introducing yourself. I promise you, I will personally reply and get back to you and, and say hello as well, but I'd, I'd love to be able to meet you. And I think it's a great exercise to be able to start feeling a little bit more confident in recording yourself. So um, any of you, there's my cell phone number, there it is. Uh, shoot me a quick video and I'd love to get to know you in that way. So as always, Kevin and the whole team at Independence, you guys are awesome. You guys are crushing it. I love following what you're doing on social. And again, things like this are just ways to add awesome value to your clients and customers. Anybody that wants to connect, scan that bad boy and we can connect pretty easily. So 